morning. Welcome to Sunday School for Sunday, June 27th, 2021. My name is Carolyn Hayes. I'm the Director of Children and Young Families at Gaithersburg Presbyterian Church, and welcome to Sunday School. Our Sunday School lesson today is based on 1 Samuel, the first chapter, uh, verses 1 through 28. It's the story of Samuel's mom, Hannah. Uh, we'll pray, and then we'll get started. Gracious and loving Lord, thank you for today. Please open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears, and open our eyes to you and to your word. Help us to learn the lessons that are here in this story for us. Help us learn how to put them to use in our lives. Help us to see you revealed in our world each and every day. Help us to see you at work actively in our world. Help us to see you in the people around us and help us to act like we do. Please bless this study and us to thy service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, to be consistent, um, I'm going to read kind of a paraphrase of this story from, from the uh, story Bible, Growing in God's Love edited by Elizabeth F. Caldwell and Carol A. Werheim. Have you ever wanted something that you didn't have? Was it something small or something big? I wanted something really big. My name is Hannah. I live with my husband, Elkanah. I love my husband, but he doesn't know how sad I am. I cry a lot. I'm not hungry at all. It feels like there's a big hole in my heart, and the one thing that can make it better is a baby. Elkanah thinks that if I eat, I'll feel better. He says, I love you, Hannah. I love you more than 10 sons could love you, but it doesn't help. I want a son. In our world, men can have more than one wife. I know that might sound weird to you. Elkanah's second wife, Peniana, lives with us. I'm even sadder when I see how happy she is with her children. It's not easy living together in our village. People don't look at me the same as they do Peniana. She has children and I don't. When we go to Shiloh to give sacrifices to God, Elkanah gives more of the sacrifice to Peniana because she has many children. I get one share to give to God. I'm also tired of Peniana making fun of me because I don't have a child. So I decided to do something about it. And I'm gonna show you a picture. You see that picture? See the lady praying and the guy kind of hiding behind the wall? Stay tuned. When we were in Shiloh, I went to the holy place to pray to God. I started to cry, so I prayed with my heart. My lips moved silently. Please, God, do you see how sad I am because I don't have a son? Remember me. If you give me a son, I promise that he will serve you all his life. Eli, the priest, was sitting at the door. He'd seen me crying and praying by moving my lips. He thought maybe I was drunk. He stopped me and said, don't act like this. I told him why I was sad and what I had prayed. He listened and blessed me. Leave here in peace. I pray that God will answer your prayer. I felt better, and later that year, I had a baby boy. I named him Samuel, which means God has heard. I remembered my promise to God. When Samuel was older, I took him to Eli so that he could serve God. God heard my prayer, and I will always remember that. Hannah didn't give up. And that is... That's one of our themes for today, is not giving up. Perseverance. Love perseveres. It means it doesn't give up. It means it has stick to I am going to give you, I'm going to share my screen. Cross your fingers, I do this right. I didn't when I tried this the last five times. Um, I'm going to try and share my screen. And show you this picture. 
Okay, Did you see that little boy? That little boy's name is Kavanaugh Bell. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit and read you the story and then scroll back up. Okay. Seven-year-old Kavanaugh Bell was bullied in school and decided to channel that energy into spreading positivity. So he started giving back to his community. He created a charity with his own money and began handing out packages filled with toiletries and food for the elderly in his neighborhood until his enterprise grew into a full blown food pantry. On his GoFundMe page, he said, after I was bullied and I felt a darkness inside me, I knew I didn't want other kids to feel the same way I felt. So I asked my mom if she could help me spread love and positivity. And the more I gave back to my community, the more I wanted to keep doing it. I don't know about you, but I think that Kavanaugh Bell is pretty much of a hero. I don't think Kavanaugh Bell thinks of himself as a hero. I think Kavanaugh Bell thinks of himself as somebody who is just doing the right thing. But Kavanaugh Bell also didn't give up. When he, when he was sad, he didn't, he didn't let it stop him. He didn't let other kids being mean to him stop him. He just picked himself up and said, I'm going to do the right thing. And he did. And I'm, he's changing other kids' lives and old people too. <laughs> um, love perseveres. I have another story about a kid that didn't give up. It's called The Hole in the Dike. I love this story. I have loved this story since I was a little kid. A long time ago, a boy named Peter lived in Holland. He lived with his mother and father in a cottage next to a tulip field. Peter loved to look at the old windmills turning slowly. He loved to look at the sea. In Holland, the land is very low and the sea is very high. The land is kept safe and dry by high, strong walls called dikes. Here in America, we call them levees, like they have in Louisiana and Mississippi. They're, they are literally like big lumps, great big lumps, like little hills of dirt and rocks and stuff that keep the sea out or the river or whatever. One day, Peter went to visit a friend who lived by the seaside. As he started for home, he saw that the sun was setting and the sky was growing dark. I must hurry or I will be late for supper, said Peter. Take the shortcut along the top of the dike, his friend said, and they waved goodbye. Peter wheeled his bike to the road on the top of the dike. It had rained for several days and the water looked higher than usual. Peter thought it's lucky that the dikes are as high and strong as they are. Without these dikes, the land would be flooded and everything would be washed away. Suddenly, he heard a soft gurgling sound. He saw a small stream of water trickling through the dike. Peter got off his bike to see what was wrong. He couldn't believe his eyes. There in the big strong dike was a leak. Oop. Sorry. Sorry about that. Peter slid down to the bottom of the dike. He got, he 
put his finger in the hole to keep the water from coming through. He looked around for help, but he could not see anyone on the road. He shouted, maybe somebody in the nearby field would hear him, he thought. Only his echo answered, everyone had gone home. Peter knew that if he let the water leak through the hole in the dike, the hole would get bigger and bigger. Then the sea would come gushing through. The fields and the houses and the windmills would all be flooded. Peter looked around for something to plug up the hole so that he could go to the village to ask for help. He put a stone in the hole and then a stick, but the stone and the stick were washed away. Peter had to stay there all alone. He had to use all his strength to keep the water out. From time to time, he would call for help, but no one heard him. All night long, Peter kept his finger in the dike. His fingers got cold and numb. He wanted to sleep, but he couldn't give up. At last, early in the morning, Peter heard a welcome sound. Someone was coming. It was the milk cart rumbling down the road. Peter shouted for help. The milkman was surprised to hear someone near the road so early in the morning. He stopped and looked around. Help, Peter shouted. Here I am at the bottom of the dike. There's a leak in the dike. Help, help. The man saw Peter and hurried down to him. Peter showed him the leak and the little stream of water coming through. Peter asked the milkman to hurry to the village and tell the people, ask them to send some men to repair the dike right away. The milkman went as fast as he could. Peter had to stay with his finger in the dike. At last, the men from the village came. They set to work to repair the dike. See, they've got big rocks and stuff. All the people thanked Peter. They carried him on their shoulders, shouting, make way for the hero of Holland, the brave boy who saved our land. But Peter didn't think of himself as a hero. He had done what he thought was right. He was glad he could do something for the country he loved so much. Now, Peter didn't think of himself as a hero. Kavanaugh Bell, I'm sure. Well, he said he didn't think of himself as a hero. He was just doing what he thought was right. You wanna know a fun story? This book, wasn't written by someone in Holland. It was written by a lady in America who'd never even been to Holland, but she was telling her kids a story and she made the whole thing up as she went along. <laughs> it ended up being, a, this was one chapter in a book called Hans Brinker and the Silver Skates. Never read the whole book, I've only read that one, but I love that story. But, or it's more of an and, not a but. And I want to ask you what right thing you might do. Most of us are never in a position where we have to keep our finger in the dike all night long. Most of us never do anything nearly as big as start a food pantry. Most of us only do little right things. And that's fine. <laughs> uh, the world that God wants us to help God create is full of people doing the little right things every day, every week, every month, every year. <laughs> Sometime you may be called to do some big right thing, but more likely than not, 
like me and like most of the rest of us, you are just called to do little right things every day, every week, every month. I am going to ask you to think about the right things that you have done, the kind things that you have done. And I want you pretty please to send me pictures of them. Have you heard about our mustard seed project? Um, people are sending me pictures of the small, kind, right things that they do. While we have been apart this last nearly year and a half now, we have still been a community of kindness out in our community here in Gaithersburg and Clarksburg and Frederick, um, doing the small right things that create the kind of world that God wants us to help create. Uh, so when you do those kinds of things, let me know. When you, when you pick up trash, when you help someone weed their garden, when you, in the fall, when the leaves start to fall, when you help someone rake leaves or, or whatever it is you do, whatever it is, please send me pictures. And we'll, I'm putting them together into a great big collage and we'll, we'll be able to see all of the small acts of love and kindness that we have we've done over the course of the last while. So, love perseveres, love perseveres, love doesn't give up, don't give up. Do the next right thing. Oh, real quick before I forget, next Sunday is the 4th of July. There will not be a Sunday school lesson like this next Sunday. We're going to put a, um, a godly play story up. So you can watch the godly play story with your family, but there will not be a Sunday school. But I will see you back on the 11th, the following. Okay, take care. Be well. See you soon. And, and on the 4th of July, we can all come back if we want to. We have to wear our masks, but we can all come back. Yay. See you then.